Well, I told you guys I was going to wait till I get this thing e-tested before uh, I went ahead and changed the oil, but it was a matter of convenience. I was already at Walmart, so I picked up a jug of oil for it and a uh, new filter. Seems Walmart's uh, selection of filters has really gone down. They used to have Bosch and Wix and some of the other brands, but now all they have are the OEM brands, which are fine, and Fram. Without starting any sort of off-topic arguments, I'm not going with the Fram. So I ended up for 20 cents more literally buying a uh, OEM AC Delco filter. So I've got to change the oil and it's simple enough to do this. I've got the car up on my trusty ramps. Also forgot to grab my wheel chalk from Harbor Freight. Love this thing. Really comes in handy. Normally I've just used four by fours and bricks, literally, but seems that uh, works a little bit better and it's safer. So car is uh, up in the air. I've driven it around quite a bit today. So the oil is nice and uh, nice and toasty. It's ready to be changed. So I got my oil filter wrench, which thankfully I can use on this car. I'm just gonna undo the oil cap here. The thing looks clean. That'll help us with the flowage situation. And we'll just get under the car. Oil filter's right there easy to get to. I've never had a car that's that easy to change the oil filter on. They've always been off to the side or behind an exhaust manifold in the back or some other weird ass place, but thankfully this one's right here. So it's easy enough to change your oil. I just gotta remove that bottom bolt out of the pan, which is a 14 millimeter. Let it drain into the uh, catch bucket here. All right, so I'll remove the lid off of my uh, oil catcher here and this is of course going to make a mess so to mitigate that we'll just do this not loose enough for me to take off by hand just yet Oh yeah, that stuff's hot. Definitely. Blacker and black though. Just about ready to put the bolt back in and we'll remove the filter. It's nice and tight. Not too tight though. Now we can pull the filter off. And one of the reasons why I'm changing this oil now is because this oil filter and the sticker in the car said the date it was last due for an oil change was June of last year. So it definitely needs to be changed. Go ahead and let all that residual drip out. This mitigates most of the mess that removing the oil filter is going to create. So there shouldn't be too much more that's going to come out once I pull it out, except for what's already in the filter. And like I said, not too much more. 
We'll dump all that crap into the oil pan. And verifying that the gasket's still on the filter. Just gonna throw that screen in, let it sit, let it drain, and clean up the mounting surface just a hair. And because I don't want to get my oily hands all over my camera, what I'm going to do is fill the oil filter with oil before I install it and then I'm going to coat the gasket with a little bit of oil as well. So the filter is now pre-filled. The gasket is lubed as well. And whenever I put a filter back on, I always really just put it on hand tight. Some people like to wrench the hell out of these things. And you don't really need to. And because some people do that, I've had instances before where I've had to stab the filter with a screwdriver and rotate it around, which can get really messy. And everything looks good. We'll leave the pan down here just to check for leaks. Got to do a little bit of cleanup, but no big deal. Now is the fun part, where we get to fill the motor up with oil. So this car is supposed to take about four and a half quarts, which this jug is about five, I believe. So we'll dump most of it in. Using the manufacturer recommended 5W30. This Walmart oil is actually pretty decent oil. It's cheap and it gets really good ratings on the uh, Bob is the Oil Guy forum. These guys are oil geeks if there's ever such a thing. Nothing that's dripping or leaking down below. So we'll continue filling. Got about a quart left in the container. So we'll just do a smidge more. And I'm just gonna let it settle. I'll check it. And if I'm happy with the level that it's at, we'll start the motor. And uh, go from there. Probably top off. Usually you need to. Now while we're waiting for it to settle, I'm a bit of a nitrile glove aficionado. These are the gloves that I've been using most of the time. They are from Harbor Freight. And you, typically you can find them on their sales rack for 10 bucks. However, I'm always down to try new gloves. And I picked these up from True Value for, I think they were 11 bucks and change. And you get twice as many, plus they have the grip on the end of it, which is pretty nice. So I'll try these out, I'll let you guys know what I think of them at a later date, but I'm liking them so far. And according to the dipstick, which will probably even out a little bit after the car is turned on, it's right up to the third hole there. I don't know how well the camera can pick that up or not. I verified on the oil gauge that the pressure built up to where it should be. There's definitely oil pressure. So we'll let it sit for a little bit longer and check and add as needed. All right, so we're go we are gonna need some oil, some top off, but it took us down to the last dot right there. So we'll add pretty much the rest of the bottle because according to the stick, when it's at that level, you add a quart. So we are in fact gonna use the whole bottle. No big deal. 
less, cat, less crap for me to keep around in the shop. And according to the gauge back here, we do have a quart left. Really like that funnel. It's cheap from Walmart as well.